a school year like we've never seen before. We have split up lunches, so you have smaller groups in the cafeteria. From making sure students are safe in the classroom to keeping kids connected at home. And helping parents make smart choices. This morning for Wellness Wednesday, we are talking about healthy snack options for kids. This morning, we're getting you ready before the bell. I am up with daybreak. I am up with daybreak. I am up with daybreak. That's right. Ah, oh, that sounds so good. Uh, daybreak before the bell, a half hour dedicated to helping parents, kids, teachers navigate this new normal as school finally starts back up today. It's day one for some of our really big districts out there. Plano ISD, 50 plus thousand students will begin learning virtually. Many districts like Plano are taking the first three weeks to see how online learning goes before heading back in person. The district superintendent shared a message with us for all of her students. The first three days of our school year, we want kids to know that we're going to spend time with them helping them get back into their new school routines, teaching them how to use their technology tools, and helping them get to know their teachers and their classmates to start forming those very important relationships. Yeah, wellness very important too. So here's a live look at Prosper High School just north of Frisco and Collin County. About half of the school district students will be showing up to class today. Of course, students will see a lot of changes when they walk through those doors, including social distancing. So it's been months of planning a lot of uncertainty, questions, and of course some stress. So Chris Sadegui shows us how some districts are preparing. When coronavirus first struck and school went online to finish the year, Wiley schools altered their grading policy to make sure students weren't hurt by the pandemic. But after a summer to prepare, this new year will be different. That's not going to be the case starting this fall. We're going to follow the regular grading policy. You'll have assignments turned in, you'll have assessments. It's just like regular school, only virtually. Both at home and on campus students will start on the 13th with a slight majority opting to return to school. And because it is nearly half the normal student body, Deputy Superintendent Kim Spicer says it will help with social distancing. We have split up lunches, so you have smaller groups in the cafeteria. For the elementary grades, we have cohorted potted them together. You have smaller groups on the, on the playground together. Um, we've set up specialized passing period times in the halls. In Frisco, they also start on the 13th, but the first three weeks will be online for everyone, even the 44% who chose on campus. In Frisco's Virtual Academy, when a student is learning live with a teacher, they'll be expected to be on time and in a designated workspace. The student will have their face visible on the camera and be participating in the class. They'll also be expected to follow dress code, so don't get too comfortable in those PJs. You know, that expectation of having a student in front of a computer for eight hours a day, that, that's just simply not the case. In Allen, their online learning will be a blend of live teaching mixed in with times students can work at their own pace. Like Frisco, their first three weeks will also be online, the option most chose anyway. But even if students are coming to school, the district says their plan to combat coronavirus will include a few things parents will have to do at home. And that's going to start at home where we have a uh, health screener form where, you know, we want our parents to make sure that uh, their students don't have a fever or a cough. It's a new way of doing things and we'll all be learning the lessons. In Collin County, I'm Chris Sadegui. Mansfield ISD begins its online classes today, and it might be easy to take for granted that you've got access to broadband and a good computer, but certainly one of the biggest obstacles for many, for many families is simply that, technology. We showed you the long lines at Mansfield High School this week as parents waited hours to pick up laptops for their kids. Now, we did hear from district officials last night. They say they've given out over 15,000 laptops, but because each one needs to be re-imaged, the process is taking longer. They are now telling parents to go to the district website to fill out a form and they will deliver the remaining laptops to students' homes. Students in Dallas ISD don't go back until after Labor Day, but district officials are working now to make sure families have what they need. They are packing up technology packs to deliver to some uh, 60,000 elementary school students. District workers say the goal is equity and ensuring students have one-to-one -one access to technology for virtual learning. Now here is something that we uh, do not want to see happen once kids get back to class. It's those packed hallways, a lack of masks. You may have seen this photo going viral out of an Atlanta area school. That school now being cleaned, turning to online learning after nine students and staff tested positive. It has created more backlash to an already hotly debated topic, which is 
should students return to the classroom? So I spoke with uh, Sheba Russell, who is an anchor at our sister station in Atlanta. She's the mom of a teenage daughter as well, just to get some perspective on how it's gone for them as our kids here in Texas get ready to return. And I have to say a lot of these school districts that are shutting down school or deciding to quarantine students and staff members. We have one school district in Georgia where they have quarantined almost a thousand students and staff members because those folks were exposed to COVID-19. And so I've seen a lot of transparency from these school districts, but I think a lot of parents at this point want some sort of mask requirement. And we haven't seen that yet from any of the school districts. Well, and as we saw in that photo that went viral, not a lot of kids are wearing masks. And now we know that school has some COVID-19 infections. What are they doing to keep people safe moving forward? So again, Mark, this is the same school district that shut down classes, in-person classes for at least two days, shut down extracurricular activities. They also said that when they make the decision to bring the kids back to school, they really want parents to screen their kids before they come to school, take their temperature, don't send them to school with COVID-19 symptoms and encourage them to wear masks. And, you know, the, the, the student who actually released that picture on Twitter said that there were staggered release times. But listen, a lot of these schools are so overcrowded. And, you know, when I look at what it would look like for my daughter to go back to school. I mean, there are thousands of kids in our high school. What would that look like? And in some cases, it's it's, it's really hard to socially distant, distance uh, with all of those kids in class together and all of them going down the hallways together. So, you know, we're, we're all still trying to figure it out here in Georgia. Oh, I think you're right. We're trying to figure it out wherever we are. Uh, Sheba yeah. Russell, thank you very much for joining us from Atlanta this morning. All right, thank you so much, Mark. All right, good stuff there, Mark. Uh, teaming up with our folks over in Georgia. All right, well, this year, you guys, you know, we're all trying to lift each other up with support now more than ever, especially with everything that's going on. Teachers, parents, students, they're all dealing with a lot. So I reached out to some of North Texas's educators for a few shout outs. Hi guys, it's Wendy Williams, and I am the principal of George Washington Carver Elementary in Garland, Texas. And what we're experiencing right now is the biggest test that we will ever take in education. But we will pass this test. We'll pass this test because we are resilient. We are amazing. We are winners. And you know what? The best is yet to come. Hi, I'm Beatrice Martinez, and I am the proud principal at Classical Center at Vile. I'm excited to start this year off with you by our side. Hi, I'm Alessia Garcia, the school counselor, and although we're starting the year off differently, we want to let you know that we're always here to support you. Hi, my name is Roberto Diaz, assistant principal here at Classical Center of Iowa. This year is kind of unique. We are facing so many obstacles and challenges, but together we can overcome all of them. I wish you the best. I'm so proud of our teachers, our front office, our custodial team, everyone's contributions and efforts is what has really allowed us to be prepared on this first day of school. I've never been prouder to say. We're Garland USA. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Thank you, uh, Garland ISD, for helping us out with that this morning. Uh, just beautiful, man. Uh, the smiles, I know it's been tough for you guys, but I appreciate you helping us out. If you want to spread the love uh, this school year, give a shout out to a teacher, a student going above and beyond, or just share some encouraging words. Send them my way. Use that hashtag before the bell. 